through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 215. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of This Is 40, we're going to talk Leslie Mann. Mm-hmm. No, this okay. is Leslie Mann. This this is your life, <laughs> as they say. Um, obviously, you know, we're going to be talking a lot about Judd Apatow, because yes. that's her husband, and they work together, they collaborate a lot, but very talented actress. Unfortunately, she does not get uh, a lot of appreciation, probably because she frequently plays sort of shrillish characters. Yeah. But or she, just side roles. In or general. side roles. Yeah. But she's so talented, and it's just it's a shame that she hasn't gotten more mm -hmm. publicity, because she definitely deserves Yeah, it. I think between those side roles and kind of just being oftentimes seem to be attached to the Judd Apatow projects is probably... Even though she, I mean, she's so talented, you, she definitely deserves it. It's oh, not, yeah. She's not just a ride for a free... No, I agree. I just think maybe the, between the ride. two of those things, she probably doesn't get as much uh, beneficial right. yeah. uh, credit as I she should. you're right. Let's go back a ways, though. Yes. We're going to talk first up. The Cable Guy. Ah, uh, yes. We're talking the Ben Stiller film here, mm -hmm. which is actually one of his early work. I mean, he's yes. only directed a handful of films, you know, Reality Bites, Zoolander, mm -hmm. uh, Tropic Thunder. Yeah. But and this is, Reality Bites, the, probably the only one before, or that yeah. was after this? I forget. Mm, no, I think it was before this. Okay. Yeah. But this is the story of a man who befriends, sort of, sort of shows a little kindness to yes. this cable guy yes. who then sort of becomes obsessed you might say i would and definitely say that he tries to escape the cable guys yes essentially obsession. yeah he, yeah he kind of stops wacky the cable guys kind of starts stalking him and getting way too involved in his life and obviously you know the star is matthew broderick yes. as the lead but more importantly jim carrey as the cable guy paid this, 20 million dollars for the role yes. this i think it was the first film he got paid 20 million yeah and it was for. the highest i think anybody had been paid at the time at least single, at least, single role not not including you know back end well, yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, exactly. Which, which, which I mean, says a lot considering originally Ben Stiller. Well, first off, he wrote the role for Chris Farley, but that obviously didn't mm. work for a variety of reasons, scheduling conflicts, and then you know, then they just made it. But uh, even more importantly, I think it's the fact that Ben Stiller originally was going to play the cable guy as well, like after I, the Chris I, Farley. You know, in some ways, I actually think I would have enjoyed it oh, more I, if I either agree. one of them had done it. I think even you know, Chris Farley cable guy would have been a pretty good... Oh, I would probably would have been great, but that we could say that about any more Chris Farley work simply because there's a finite amount. But I can definitely say for the sake, I think at the time Ben Stiller was in the right place, he would have been good for the role as well. But he, yeah. he found it too hard at the time to direct and star, something he clearly got yeah. over. So he backed out of that and started looking for roles to take it over. I mean, obviously, you know, Wesley Mann is sort of the love interest yes, in the movie. Yes, of Matthew Broderick. And, I mean, she's, she's good in the movie, but she's actually, you know, surprisingly straight in terms of she's not the comedic foil in this movie yes. where she very much becomes that as her career goes yeah. on but she's she's very much straight like kind of you know token love interest almost in, yeah but i mean she's sort of like you know there's sort of the the connection between her and was a jim carrey sort yes. of befriends her and <laughs> yes. sort of like there's this back and forth but she's really very much just like I don't know if you'd almost say like the damsel in distress between mm, them. Sort yeah, of like yeah, she's, I can see she, that. She's not really creating the jokes, though. She, yes. he, he's having to deal with these situations that are then presented to her and make it look normal. Yeah, she's more really more reacting to things than she is actually being a force of her own. And I remember this being sort of one of the first instances that really sort of slapped Jim Carrey because before mm -hmm. this, Jim Carrey yeah. was like a freight train who's mm -hmm. like it looked like nobody could be a bigger star yes. than him. And this is one of the first times that. He he came back to reality, and it's funny because actually he's kind of killed his comedy routines. To be honest, I think after this, he didn't. It was when he started doing like Truman Show and mm -hmm. a lot more of his dramatic roles. Because yeah. I think comedy, he had. But I think I mean murder. I think he had this, and he had like Ace Ventura two uh, yeah. very close together, yeah, and so it was right. like quickly everyone was like, "Whoa, maybe we invested too much in that," <laughs> which is a shame because you know he then does stuff like Liar Liar, which yeah. is fantastic still. But yeah. uh, I mean, he's obviously very talented for the the slapsticky sort of comedy, yes. and he's very good. The lisp was kind of weird to me, mm. but um, I mean, it was it, it did better than I thought it did. I mean, it made a hundred million dollars worldwide, wow. which is sort of probably around break even, maybe make probably. a little money. Yeah. But like, I thought it was like a flat out bomb, which yeah. just shows you how much power he even still had. Yeah. Just because even like a film that people didn't like mm -hmm. still was like break even, make money. Yeah, I him. think this was one, definitely one of those films that there was enough people who thought 
Well, people say it's bad, but Jim Carrey can't be unfunny and yeah. would go into it with that. Because I know that I remember hearing it was bad before I saw it, yeah. and I still remember seeing it, thinking it was bad. Then now I've come around and I like the film a it's, lot more. I enjoy it. Yeah, I, th- I think it's decent. I don't. I don't I'm not going to rave about it, but you know, it's 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 not it's not nearly as bad as it was sort of given the reputation of. Yes, true. Yeah, I would so. agree. I also think it's interesting that uh, Ju- this is where Leslie Mann met Judd Apatow. Yes, that's right. He was a producer. He was on a this. producer. Interesting enough, he even though he only received producer credit he was also one of the film's writers i mean it makes sense yeah he was I denied mean, a screenwriting credit by the writers guild of america and challenged the rooming ruling cl- uh, claiming that he wrote much of the movie's dialogue in many of the scenes and there's i guess a novelization of the cable guy which is weird to me <laughs> that's weird but the novelization restores his credit as writer of the film also entertainingly enough the novelization has like deleted scenes basically written into it so like more explanation around makes, things makes sense a novelization though I don't understand I, think, I guess they make novelizations of anything I, though but, just, but I mean that's interesting just, that you know they connected over yeah. it. it makes total sense that he was a writer on it though yeah, like, I'd be yeah. shocked if he wasn't exactly moving right along though you mm-hmm. know a couple years later yes or one year later to be exact oh, wow. she did a remake <laughs> I guess you would say of a classic cartoon mm-hmm. George of the Jungle yes Brendan obviously Fraser. she's not George no she was <laughs> Ursula's Stan Hope Stan Hope yes which was the again love interest Le- f- almost like archetypal damsel in distress the George of the Jungle female well, character I was thinking about it isn't it essentially in a lot of ways just like the comedic version I mean I'm not the first person to say this but it's the comedic version of Tarzan yeah is exactly really what it is Definitely. I mean it's, oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, a send up of it's it a, yeah it's the Tarzan parody or, it's, or you could say you know it's essentially like um, Crocodile Dundee where yeah. it's, it's like this beautiful woman takes this sort of savage into yes. her um, into her, into into her life yeah, and, and tries like, to yeah. show him like big city life yeah. and sort of craziness ensues and he has to deal with like the assholes around her mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or yeah exactly yeah. and you know he has to fight for love mm-hmm. and they find out former suitors etc etc yes and I mean again you know she's really not I mean, I guess she's more funny in this movie. I mean, it's much yeah. more of a quirky sort it's of film a, all around the board. It's a weird film, which I always forget um, has, well, I think Owen Wilson in it. Uh, yeah. Am I'm pr- uh, or who am I thinking? I'm, I don't know. I think I'm, I might John Cleese. Thinking, yeah, I might be it. thinking John Cleese. And so Thomas Hayden Church was interesting. Oh, yes. Sort of the, yes, that's the right. The foil. That's the right. Villain. That's who I was actually thinking. I don't know why I thought. Um, either way. He uh, was in The Cable Guy, if that might uh, be. That's probably why. Yeah. Um, I also think it's interesting that even though this movie... Brought, was it a bomb? It, it must have been a bomb. No, it huh. was actually a success. Interesting. Not Barely a huge a one. Success. Yeah. I mean, it cost 55 and it made 175 Oh, wow. Yeah. 170 yeah. Okay, fair enough. Don't doubt the George in the Jungle. Well, I mean, which I think it's interesting to that shows as far as like an adaptation of one of those, like what, Rocky and Bullwinkle? I think that's what mm-hmm. George of the Jungle was from. Yeah. Uh, the fact that almost every element of the original George of the Jungle cartoon series is included in the movie, even the never argue with the narrator line that shows up in Jay Ward's cartoons. So. And it's also funny to think that Brendan Fraser also was deadly do right. So yes, you know, oh yeah, bit. that's true. I also found just as a strange thing to be noted as a single line by itself as a point of trivia. Was it his own cartoon actually? George of the Jungle. I think, um, I think it might have become one later, but I want to say okay. it and Dudley do right. But you know, they were all made by the same company, and uh, okay, so, so even if they were had their own show, they were. It was yeah. like Hanna Barbera. There was so much yeah, yeah, crossover. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the ground of the jungle was made out of mashed potatoes. I don't right. know why. I don't. There's no explanation cheap. of the relevance as to what that would do if that was probably cheap, like cheaper dirt, like more malleable, like. Yeah, what like valuable. what was the purpose? That's interesting. Of, yeah, weird. Just random things you find when looking for trivia. Just want to give a shout out to the director Sam Wiseman, mm. um, who done a lot of TV work, but he also directed D two, The Mighty Ducks. <laughs> Represent. Um, unfortunately, he also sort of <sighs> found a way to fit it in. Didn't you? <laughs> the last film. <laughs> Feature film he's directed, he's done still some TV work, mm. but the last feature film he did was Dickie Roberts, former child star, which might explain why that's the last <sighs> film he directed. Yeah, so. maybe. Anyway, let's move yeah. on. L- let's. To a more, I guess you would say, serious side, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> yeah. of Leslie Mann, yeah. and that was in Big Daddy. Yes. This is, again, sort of the serious side of Adam Sandler as well, yes. as he plays a man who's fallen out of a relationship which is with Leslie Mann, uh-huh. ex-girlfriend. Yes. And he sort of essentially stumbles on a kid. Like, he's put in a position <laughs> yeah. of having to take care of a kid briefly. Mm-hmm. And, and falls for the kid. Falls for the kid and ends up falling. I think it's Leslie Mann's sister. Is that? Yes. That's Layla. Joey, Joey, Joey Lauren, R.M.'s mm-hmm. place. But um, 
I mean, it's a much sort of smaller part, I guess, comparatively to some of these other roles. Yeah. Because she's not the love interest. She just Correct. sort of comes in and is basically a ass to some, Adam some, Yeah, someone that he should be happy he's not with yeah. and thus be able to move on from. But at the same time, she's somewhat sympathetic in that you can understand mm-hmm. that before that he really was... In arrested development, like uh, he had yeah. not grown up, he was definitely he was definitely sort of a man child, and you can <laughs> sort of see why she was frustrated. Mm-hmm. But the way she acts because of that is is meant to be funny because she's a jerk in doing it, yes. obviously. So yeah. I mean, she's she's definitely still funny, but she's not like I mean, there's a little bit of drama behind it. Yeah, as well. but not not a lot. I mean, in terms of like Adam Sandler's career, this is obviously sort of one of the first. Um, I guess steps towards drama as well for him. Yeah, I, mean, I guess. I mean, I mean, he's coming from stuff like Happy Gilmore. Yeah, I guess it's like, like one of his first Billy Madison. One of his first roles where he's actually playing just an individual a rather than a dude. caricature yeah. or a you know skit based character. Like, yeah. yeah, still made a ton of money. Made two hundred thirty oh, yeah. million dollars worldwide. Oh, I'm not surprised. And it also, uh, amusingly enough, was uh, co-written by Steve Francis, or sorry, Steve Franks. Mm. Steve Franks, who was the creator of Psych. Oh, interesting. interesting. Hmm. Um, but also want to note the director is Dennis Dugan, who might not be a household name, but he's essentially directs everything Adam Sandler does yeah. now at this point. He did, yeah. you know, Happy Gilmore. He did Don't Mess with the Zoan. Don't, uh, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Uh-huh. Grown Ups, Just Go With It, Jack and Jill. Like, he's, he's doing Grown Ups too. Like, yeah. he's really just, he does all those Adam Sandler yeah. movies. So if you love it, like, at love Adam Sandler or hate him, he's definitely one you can direct some of that yep, anger to. Yep, the Happy well. Madison crew definitely stick together. And this film was, uh, Got a whole bunch of nominations for Razzie Awards. Adam Sandler <laughs> won for Worst Actor. It was nominated for Worst Picture. Lost to Wild Wild West. <laughs> it was nominated for Worst Director. Lost to Barry, Barry Sonnenfeld for Wild Wild West. Uh, <laughs> Good. Nominated for Worst Screenplay. No, it's <laughs> don't not, let, not, a, not a well-received film. Don't but, ever let that gentleman get away with Wild Wild West. Yeah, Make so. sure at every chance you can. But, you know, I mean, at the same time, if you're... Um, if you're Leslie Mann, you know, Adam Sandler is a friend, a, a former roommate, as I recall, yes. of a Judd Apatow. Correct. You know, obviously, you know, he's a huge box office success. He's a friend. Why? Of course you're going to do it. Oh, yeah. Like, of course you're going to do exactly. it. Exactly. And it's not like in, you know, some of these early points she was committing a ton. She's not main character in that. I mean, all, the, yeah. all these films we've mentioned so far have made over $100 million. Huh. So, so she's really bankable. I mean, at the very least, you can say that. Yep. One example of a less profitable movie, though. 2002, Stealing Harvard. Damn is, you, Stealing Harvard. This is the Jason Lee starred film uh, yes. about a man who essentially promises that if his niece gets into college, he'll pay for it. Yes. And unfortunately, she gets into Harvard, mm-hmm. which is not going to be cheap. And they're like really, I think, supposed to be, they're very white trash, so even her getting into a college at all is... Yeah, her mom's played by Megan Mullally. Yeah, that's so, right. Who's like a complete, complete <laughs> like loser. And so he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll pay for your college. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, she gets into yeah. Harvard and it's like, okay, now what do I do? And he and his friend, played by Tom <sighs> Green have to come up with a scheme to yeah. steal money. Mm-hmm. Um, at the a same, variety of schemes, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, there's a whole bunch, oh. none of which are successful. <laughs> at the Poor same, funny. At the same time, though, he is trying to do this behind the back of his girlfriend slash, I think, fiance. I think, maybe. Uh, Leslie Mann. Correct. Who's overprotective da- dad, played by... Um, Dennis Farina uh, yes. uh, is always sort of like on Jason Lee's growth. Mm-hmm. And it's just, in, in, in essence, like, I, I thought, you know, it seems like it shouldn't be terrible. Like, yeah. I like so, Jason Lee a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leslie Mann's usually good. Yeah. The premise isn't necessarily bad. Yeah. Like, it seems like it could be funny. Dennis Farina is kind of an interesting guy. It was funny and, <laughs> like, get shorty, yeah, for instance. definitely. So it seems like there are a lot of elements going for it. <laughs> Obvious warning signs, Tom, Tom Green. Green. Which, like, you know, interesting thing because you got the whole Happy Madison, Judd Apatow family that Leslie Mann gets caught up into. Yes. So it's not surprising when you see other members of that being flying into things. Originally, Owen Wilson was set to play Duff. Mm. The character of Tom I Green. I can see that, yeah. And I bet you it was just one of those things where it was like he was either busy doing one of the other billions of movies he was doing, or they just was like, "Oh, it's the Tom Green year. Let's, no, I mean, let's as toss a, him we were, in everything." We're talking about this in the car ride over that, like, it was very much of the time. Like oh, Tom yeah. Green was. It's it's funny to think about, but he was huge back in the day. Like yeah. his MTV show was huge. Mm-hmm. Like he, I mean, Fre- he had his own feature film, Freddie Got Fingered, which Ugh. was terrible. Yeah. 
terrible. Yeah. But at the same time, he was, he was a very popular But I think guy. it was after this, right? Uh, eh, it was around the same time, okay. I think. I mean, I mean, was, not much after it, but I think it might I have been was, slightly after. Because I, I want to say it was like, but I, it was right around the same yeah. time. But you know, it, he was he was super popular. I mean, mm-hmm. he was involved with Drew Barrymore. Yes, like he was yeah. in the first Charlie's Angels. <laughs> like he was he was a big thing there for a while. And so, you know, I could easily see them being like, you know, we want this quirky character. Yeah. And Tom Green. I mean, if that's like Vern Troyer when Austin Powers movies. Well, it's, it's one of those things. I don't know how much improv there was, but if mm. it was. As it was written, I find it hard to believe. I imagine they let Tom Green do a fair amount of improv just because it feels very Tom yeah. Greenish. I like to blame this movie for being what drove, um, even though he's probably already a Scientologist at the time, oh, Jason, Lee, yeah. Jason Lee to both Scientology and to eventually the Alvin and Chipmunk movies. So uh, no, I think he, after attempting to... If, if, if he would have had a couple successes in the oh, early he had 2000s... My name is Earl, though. Like, but I mean before then. I think if he had a few successes in the early 2000s, him and Kevin Smith would have done Fletch One, and then he would have continued to be a bankable star rather than yeah. slid into Scientology kid-friendly I, I think yeah, I'm pretty sure he was already a Scientologist I know, but point. I like to blame Tom Scientology. Green and the horribleness of stealing Harvard for his downfall. I feel like it's one of those things, though, that I think it deserves. at this point, Jason Lee had been so good that it was like an aberration um, <laughs> yeah. that he did this, but it's one of those things that you can't be as good as he was there for a while. So Correct. as time went on, his like track record leveled yeah. out a little bit more than yep. it was. Everybody's mortal. That's probably why he turned yeah. to religion. Yeah. Anyway, moving along, mm-hmm. we're going to jump a ways forward and finally talk about Judd Apatow. Obviously, yes. she Leslie Mann was in you know, 40-Year-Old Virgin, mm-hmm. which she was very funny in her yes. role. role. Uh, she was in Knocked Up as sort of one of the side characters, which we'll talk about a little bit more yes. because of This is 40. But mm-hmm. she was also in... Funny people. Yes, the semi biographically inspired film mm-hmm. um, directed by Judd Apatow about a man played by Adam Sandler who is diagnosed. Who's sort of a film star, much all in the line of Adam Sandler. Yes, diagnosed yes. with a terminal disease. Correct. Sort of reconnects with an ex girlfriend. Adam Sandler wasn't, but that's right. just, just reconnects just with an ex girlfriend. Um, realizes he's not having a terminal disease. And yes, there's fallout from that. Yes, it's how surprising. I mean, it's I mean, it's long. It's a two and a half hours oh, essentially. Oh man! It's it's weird. Like they they essentially gave everything away in the trailer, which I found to be difficult. <laughs> How shocking! But you know, I, I still I enjoy it. Like it's one of the sort of more restrained Seth Rogen roles, as yes. well as Jonah Hill. Much more restrained Adam Sandler, which mm-hmm. I like a lot. Both roles written for Seth Rogen and Adam Sandler. Yep. Um, Leslie Mann is very good in sort of this complex role of being be caught between you know, her current marriage with yes. children and the sort of love of... Her actual uh, children, by the way. Yeah, well, they, they were the, her actual children. Yep. And, knocked uh, up as well. Knocked up as well, and this is 40. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, she, she's she's got this complicated situation between, you know, the man who she was like her true love mm-hmm. versus the one she's currently in love with. And, you know, I think that's a very relatable yeah, thing definitely. to most people because most people, you know, don't end up with <laughs> their true love, so to speak. And it was... Some do. Some do. <laughs> some do. Hey. But uh, it, it's, it's, it's a very interesting sort of thing. And, you know, it kind of devolves in the last third of the movie once yes. he's... Um, Diagnosed as not being terminal, Correct, yeah. and he sort of falls into this dickish role, <laughs> and she sort of falls out of her relationship, and Eric Bana sort of comes back to try uh, and yes, win her back. And it's good to see him in a funny role. Mm-hmm. I like, I like, I think he's a very funny guy. I think that's definitely one of his underrated traits. I would agree with that. It's it's overall an underappreciated film, I would say. I, I, I also find it weird that, or not weird, but entertainingly funny that the you know in the very beginning of the movie the prank calls that it shows um a young adam sandler making Mm -hmm. those are actual home footage of judd apatow and adam sandler when they were roommates of him making actual prank calls i I can imagine they kept around yeah i mean i can imagine it It was probably one of those things that they're both on their way up and they're just like you know keep these Mm -hmm. maybe we'll use these. or just like judd apatow being like you're very funny when you prank call people i'm gonna record it and show it to people because it's funny but i mean it's, it's also got great supporting characters i mean uh jonah hill Jason yes. Schwartzman played oh, yeah, friends right. of um, Seth Rogen, mm-hmm. and apparently Jason Schwartzman was a composer on the film, oh, which wow. I found interesting. He does have a band, so I'm not surprised. But also, got to give a huge shout out to Aubrey Plaza, who plays uh, the romantic yes. interest of Seth Rogen, and who is fantastic. I think this was her feature film debut. Probably it actually got her involved in stand up comedy as well. Really? Yeah. So she did yeah, a lot of it. A lot, kind of about a lot of stand up, right? That's 
his routine yes, is very thematically exactly, yeah. important. I thematically mean, important obviously, film. Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Aubrey Plaza, yes. all are stand up comedians. Um, yeah, you know, it's. it's Judd Apatow started as a stand up. Aziz Ansari is great. Oh, that's his role right. as yeah. Randy, which yeah. he actually created this whole persona mm-hmm. around. Because it got so popular. I think yeah. the city based it on Soldier Boy. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's really funny. So, very, very enjoyable movie. Sadly, not a huge or not a success theatrically, but uh-huh. I think it sort of generated or garnered a bit of a following. That's good. Cult following, if you will. So I will. I don't know. I like it. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's underappreciated, but yeah. what what say you? <laughs> One that uh, you've spoken about before, yes. though. She was also in the same year. Mm-hmm. I love you, Philip Morris. Yes, with uh, Ewan McGregor and Jim Carrey again. Again, yes. Reteaming with Jim Carrey, but for a very different reason. Yes. So <laughs> what exactly was her role in this movie? She was Jim she Carrey's uh, wife. When he was, was straight, yeah. When he was straight and a normal man, that he then abandons and leaves and acts like he's dead, and you know, mm. a, basically screws over six hundred times. She by, screws him over. No, he screws her okay. over by abandoning her and then like becoming gay, and then he wants to. He like tries to marry a man when they're still together, and a variety of uh, sundry deeds. So she kind of plays the. The victim esque. Is is it, is it like her? It was was she's playing she, a very like housewifey? Is she funny? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it, there's not much humor in it except for the fact of like her and Jim Carrey gratuitously fucking in one scene, Interesting. which is uh, really then transitions to him fucking a man very quickly in the film to show. So it's an interesting balance. Thing. Yeah, it's all about yeah. balance. Mostly, she plays someone who gets screwed over though. <laughs> she does. She does very well. I mean, ever since like the Forty Year Old Virgin, like yes. she she does that sort of role mm-hmm. really well. Yeah, so it's lo- pretty based on, or pretty accurately Loose based thing. on um, Stephen J. Russell, uh, actual con man who did most of these things. Kept br- finding reasons to get out of prison. He fakes uh, cancer at one point or wow. AIDS, I think. Fake says that he has AIDS and fake almost gets up to the point where he gets out of prison or fakes his death. And then, I mean, real scumbag of a guy. I was I was surprised to see that this film got nominated for a Writers Guild Award oh, for wow. the script. So, good I'm on not you surprised. For that. Uh, interestingly enough, I found this interesting, especially because what does it say there about its uh, how well it did? Not very well, well but the, I don't think it had a wide theatrical release. Well, no, that's release. the interesting thing: is the film was released in Europe, Taiwan, and Japan between February and April of 2010. In that time, it made more than 18. Or it had already made more than eighteen million dollars internationally, exceeding its thirteen million dollar budget by the time it actually opened in the United States. Just doesn't hurt. Like so, it's like it was weird because I think it was like released and it was supposed to have a limited American release, and then that release was pushed back. But in that time, it made all of its money back. So it's like that's good. Good on it for that. It hadn't even opened in America. It was already a. a yeah, full they success. probably knew that it wasn't going to be a big hit theatrically in America. So you know, it's that's why you have those. International rights it's true. to sell. It's true. You know, usually gay con artists don't. I mean, not they're getting easy, closer to being more acceptable, but it's still not 2009, there I don't no. think it was that. Still, still not that great. One of the more sort of interesting, different roles mm-hmm. that sh- we've we spoke about this film before because I think both of us liked it. Oh yeah, was 2011's Rio. Yes, especially in comparison to Rango, which also yes, came out the same, same year. year. It's also had an R in its name and yes. was released like one month and apart or got something. Way more. Buzz, Buzz won the for Academy some Award was, for Best and Animated was not Feature. Good. Yeah. But Rio was actually very yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, Rio is obviously an animated mm-hmm. feature film about a couple um, macaws, yeah, I, guess I believe you would that's say, what they blue are, yeah. macaws, mm-hmm. that are sort of brought together in Rio during Carnival mm-hmm. and sort of this quirky relationship because one doesn't really know about being a macaw. Yes, because I think they're supposed to be like the last two left. Yes, the last two alive. Yeah. The male has been domesticated in America. And, Played by Jesse Eisenberg. Yes. Or voiced by Jesse Eisenberg. Yes, and then the female lives obviously wild in, semi-wild in Brazil. Voiced by Anne Hathaway. Yes. And... Um, Leslie Mann plays the owner mm-hmm. of... Linda, I believe her name is. Uh, yes, Linda, yes. who's the owner of Blue, who's the the domesticated yes. one. And she's put in this position of bringing this bird down to South America. <laughs> to essentially, <braid> it. <laughs> well, to essentially sort of try and continue it on. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's an act of love. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's, it's not, yeah. It's, I mean, and 
Honestly, her role in this is not a comedic one, per se. I mean, there's definitely mm -mm. funny things that she does. Yeah. She has her own little storyline as well. But at the same time, I mean, her relationship with Blue is a very sweet one. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's very much a, almost like a child. I business. mean, you, you can, uh, any, anyone who's a pet owner, at least a good pet owner, yeah, can exactly. appreciate that sort of love of an mm -hmm. animal and want to, you know, protectiveness, yes. support of it, all that sort of stuff. And she very much embraces that role. And I, I, I mean, it's, I, I, I like it because it is so earnest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, definitely. It really, it really, it really isn't just like a wacky relationship. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, not like a, and it's not one of those like my pet is lost and I have to hunt after it because I no. want it. It's very much like she cares about the well-being of her pet and its life. So yeah. No. I think it's interesting that this was, you know, not surprisingly because they haven't done a crap ton of movies, but it was the first film from Blue Sky Studios to be a musical. And it was the first film of theirs since the first Ice Age to use uh, human characters. To actually have That's full funny. human characters. So, and but, cons uh, considering how well they've done with well, those movies. Yeah, so. you got you got to give a lot of credit to the director Carlos Saldana, mm -hmm. who, who directed a whole bunch of the Ice Ages. Yes. He directed, you know, this. I mean, he's basically made like four or five hundred million dollars on <laughs> yeah. all of his films. Yeah, I so. think he's just he's, uh, uh, he's, internationally those the movies kill. You may not huge. if you don't think they're huge. Just look think, up their numbers. I think like Ice Age three was in like yeah. the top twenty yep. gross mm -hmm. period. Yeah, worldwide, and not like nineteen either. I think it's like, like 13 yeah, or 12 it's, it's or something. It's surprising like how well they do. But, you know, it's it's a fun film. I, mm -hmm. I agree. As you said before, like, it came out right around the same time as Rango, and I thought it was much superior uh -huh. to it, much more fun. But Rango really garnered all the attention. It won the Academy Award. Yeah. I don't even think this wasn't even nominated for the Academy Award. Just it, was only, it was only nominated for music. Academy oh, yeah, Award. that's right, because this was when there was still, I think, uh, the, there was only like two movies nominated yes. that year, yes. if I remember correctly. Yes, you're right. Uh, I also find it interesting that uh, just because, you know, we don't. We we oftentimes wonder about competing animation studios and mm -hmm. what causes them to make this make different things. Uh, this film has been cited as a reason why Pixar canceled a film they were working on with a similar storyline called mm. Newt. Interesting. So they had a similar story, some similar story called Newt that they full on canceled after hearing about. Blue Rio. Sky Studios is is a pretty big juggernaut. I mean, the stuff yeah. like you might not it might not be a household name, but the stuff that they make make exactly huge like I said. It's like you just look at Ice Age and it's like, oh man, I you no wonder if they get backing because <laughs> why they keep making them. Yeah, no, it's yeah. it's totally it's a big deal. So. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. And it's a, it's it's good. Like it definitely, is. if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend checking. Oh, yeah. I'm not even a musical fan, and even I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, same here. So. Also, there's also like some interesting things, like uh, they they um the soccer game that's going on. The reason everyone mm. gets so excited in it and stops paying attention beyond the fact of carnival going on is that it's Brazil playing. I think. Uh, Paraguay. Um, I forget who exactly they're playing, but they're playing like their biggest soccer rifle. I would and imagine playing it, Argentina. Yeah, probably Argentina. I forget which, but they're playing it at Brazil too. So it's like during Carnival, Brazilian Brazil. soccer in the Brazilian stadium playing their biz biggest. Really? Yeah. And I think it does a good job of showcasing. Oh, Brazil. I know. I just like, find no, that an I mean, interesting thing for like adults to be but like. But I mean, I think it, does, it makes Brazil look oh, good. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, you think about like most portrayals of Brazil, like City of God, like it's <laughs> yeah, not a pleasant true. place. Yeah. So it's a, it's a pleasant enough. one. Fair enough. Brings us to this Friday, mm -hmm. which is December 21st, the yes. release of This Is 40. And the end of the world. And the end of the world. Most likely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully. Hopefully not. <laughs> but um, uh, This Is 40 is essentially sort of a sequel to Knocked Yeah, that's up. even being tagged as that, like as the a sort, sort of, of sequel to which Knocked it, Up. I mean, it's, a, it's the story of Paul Rudd and Leslie Mann, who were the brother and sister-in-law of Catherine Heigl yes. in Knocked Up. Mm -hmm. who, the ones who already had the children and were giving yes. her all the reasons why she should. Yes, and they're sort of, you know, I mean, Paul Rudd had sort of a relationship with Seth uh, Rogen's mm -hmm. character. And yes. Uh, this, this is their own film. I mean... Mm -hmm. I don't know why they don't just call it a spin-off at that point rather than a sequel. Yeah, but, you but, know... I mean, uh, at the same time, like, I don't know, like, spin-off is much more TV-related. And there's not a heck of a lot of spin-off movies that you think about. I mean, mm. if they're right in some, I'd love to have to look them up. Scorpion King. Oh, Boom. Let's not go there. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of positives for this film. I mean, mm -hmm. people love Paul Rudd. Hell, Brandy oh. wrote a whole article about how much she loves Paul Rudd. He's a lovable um, guy. He's a lovable guy, a very talented guy. You know, that's that's a very strong thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Leslie Mann, very, very talented actress. Very, very funny. Granted, she was a little bit shrewish mm. in the first Knocked yes. Up. But she's so funny. Like, she was so funny in 40 year Virgin. Mm -hmm. And when she is funny... When like, she's on, she is on. It's on. And I, <laughs> I, I'm thinking that this movie might dial back the shrewness probably. to her. Well, probably, yeah. Which I, I think will... Be good, sort of mm -hmm. give her more dimension. Yeah, um, I, th I think it looks fine. I, I mean, I don't. 
it doesn't have Catherine Heigl or Seth Rogen, but as, as some of those other characters yeah. from Knocked Up, like uh, Jason Segel's in it. You can't uh, get around an Apatow film without yeah, a Seagull. Charlene Yee's in it. <laughs> yeah, yep. But you also have some great additions, you know, uh, Chris O'Dowd. Uh-huh. So funny. I loved him in Bridesmaids and mm-hmm. uh, the IT crowd. Yeah. Also, Melissa McCarthy from Bridesmaids, mm-hmm. who's blowing up the comedy world these days. Slam dunk. And you also have some new people to the Judd Apatow world. Yes. Lena Dunham, for instance, who's yeah. in, obviously, Judd Apatow produces Girls. Yes. So, you know, she's she's a recent Chris addition. Chris Dowd's in Girls as well. Yes, exactly. So, you know, you got the, the, some of those There's other... a lot of carryover with all yeah. those people. They have a lot of crossover connections. Yes. So, so far, response has been mixed to the film, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still optimistic. I'm I definitely going to check it out. I've enjoyed all of this film so mm-hmm. far. And, and, I, and I want to say, even though even though I really enjoyed the film at the time, I want to say that their parts of Knocked Up were possibly the most lasting for me because I don't I remember I think, a lot. I of, think Knocked Up was very funny still. I I enjoyed it. On there's, stu- there's, there's stuff like you know like the Mr. Skin thing. Like that's okay. such a funny idea to be like, what's this Mr. Skin <laughs> thing? Like, there's just it's it's a funny movie. Like I think I think it's underappreciated. I know people who find the topic of unplanned pregnancies to not mm. be a funny one. <laughs> so that definitely could take it back, but I, I thought it was a funny I, Maybe movie. it's just the fact that I saw that and Juno in mm, close proximity tough, when yes. I was dating someone who was kind of baby crazy. That's a, that's, that's a challenge, yeah. Yeah. Not a good idea. Anyway, let way. us know your thoughts. Never about... give crazy a baby, says George Sr. Yes. from Arrested Development. That's, that's smart. <laughs> Wise advice right there. But uh, let us know your thoughts about you know Leslie Mann or your interest in This Is 40. Mm-hmm. We'd love to hear them. And uh, join us next week. How hot week. you think Paul Rudd is? Because clearly that's a reason to go see the movie. He's smoking. He is. And uh, join us next week for a DVD rundown for December 25th. Uh-oh. Christmas. Christmas hey, Day. You know, if you have some money to spend, you know, go out and buy. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't buy a pack of cigarettes like Greg. <laughs> um, but as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, mm-hmm. phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv. Yes, we are. Miro. Roku. The Roku box. Good Check stuff. in and get glue. Get some like, badges. Leave some sticky. reviews on iTunes. Love it. Maybe we'll, I don't know. We'll shout you out. out. We'll sh- we'll oh, give, we'll totally shout we'll you give out. You the, we'll give you the biggest out shouting that could ever be shouted out. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Board can't st